Hey everybody, Mike here. SpaceX has just released more details on Starlink latency, this time with performance data while the system is heavily loaded. All these details, coming up. So way back in 2016, feels like forever ago, SpaceX applied to the FCC for the first authorization to launch the Starlink constellation. Now, in typical SpaceX fashion, they've been iterating on the design as they've gone from there. And as part of that iteration, they've applied to the FCC for modifications to the original constellation design. The major modification that's been approved was to allow SpaceX to lower the first shell, the one that they're deploying now, from around 1,100 kilometers, much closer to 550 kilometers. And they're now basing their latency measurements and the performance of their private beta on the results from that first shell, which is still being deployed. Now, spring of 2020, SpaceX made another request for modification. Based on the results of the first modification, they now want to move the rest of the satellites in the constellation down to a similar altitude from around 540 to 570 kilometers. So all with, you know, around that same band where this first shell is going. And this application for modification has kicked off a storm of opposition from many different satellite operators and 5G operators. Now this is typical with FCC uh, requests for authority for this type of thing, but this one seems particularly heated uh, and particularly between Viasat and SpaceX, arguing about many things, but the most recent one is latency. Because of this argument, this back and forth between SpaceX and Viasat, SpaceX has now published uh, a bit of a summary on how they're actually testing their latency and coming up with the numbers that they're saying. And this has given us a big insight into how they're testing with the Beta Constellation. So I wanted to make this video to go into some of those details and uh, get a better idea of how their testing's working. The previous modification for the first shell, bringing it down, took around four and a half months from application to approval by the FCC. This modification is now at around five and a half months uh, and still no approval, obviously, but SpaceX is definitely pushing uh, FCC to, to make a decision. So this modification in question to bring the rest of the satellites down doesn't really rely on the latency values that SpaceX is talking about. In fact, the original application doesn't really talk that much about latency at all. SpaceX brings up latency in one of their communications with the FCC uh, where they emphasize and really ask the FCC to hurry up and make a decision. And Viasat has kind of latched onto this latency figure. So in the SpaceX presentation, they show a few screenshots from speedtest.net showing latency around 19 to 20 milliseconds. And Viasat has really kind of called this out. You can see here Viasat's comments that the latency is based on anecdotes, not representative of what can be expected on a fully loaded system. Do not support this conclusion. Pretty harsh on SpaceX. I find it fascinating to read the letters going back and forth, all to the FCC, but effectively SpaceX criticizing Viasat and Viasat criticizing SpaceX for all manner of things. And this is SpaceX's response. You can see um, misleading and incorrect filings recently submitted. GSOs postulate theoretical claims SpaceX has conducted millions of tests on its actual operating equipment. Pretty good smackdown by SpaceX. I did a video a while back on the FCC Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. And for that application, latency is definitely important because it affects how much money the various companies applying could be eligible for. But if you remember from that video, the deadline to submit information was September 23rd. So that deadline is closed. So the discussion about latency now might impact FCC decision making, but it's really out of scope for the uh, Rural Digital Opportunity Fund itself. But for our advantage, it does give us a lot of insight into new information on latency 
with Starlink. So let's take a look. The FCC site with all of these documents going back and forth has been a bit unreliable for me. So I've started making a mirror on github.com with the link here and down below in the description uh, to provide a more stable reference for me to kind of refer to. So all my reference links will start to point to this mirror and you can see the documents I'm talking about there. So it's the latest submission from September 29th where SpaceX is going into some details on how they're testing latency. And the main point they're making is that they are in fact trying to simulate real world loaded conditions that the Constellation will face when it's actually being used by the public. And there's a few interesting points there that I wanted to call out. The first is that they call out testing in congested cells. I haven't seen a lot of official information from SpaceX on how they're organizing the spectrum, how they're allocating it to different areas. And there's been a lot of speculation on how they'll use cells for coverage, but seeing it here now from this description, I think is pretty interesting. So they're talking about using congested cells. If you remember way back when they first announced the private beta, I speculated that they might actually try to cluster beta users in smaller areas to simulate more real world conditions. And it appears like this is the case. So somehow, whether it's their own deployments or the private beta users, they've got a large number of users in a small dense area all within one cell to simulate this congested cell um, kind of environment. So with that congested cell, they're now testing users latency there. And in the data, they picked out 30 heavy users within that cell and basically recorded data from them over a one week period. And to make it even more challenging, in the user terminals, they have a debug mode or, or, or operating parameter where even when the customers aren't using the Starlink terminal, it's going to, in the background, send debug data up and down just to keep the channels loaded. So with that kind of heavy usage scenario, they've come up with these latency numbers. So what the chart's showing for this heavily congested cell, these 30 kind of heavy users, they're experiencing on the 95th percentile, so that means 95% of the time, they're getting 42 milliseconds or better latency. And then 50% of the time, so the 50th percentile, they're getting better than 30 milliseconds latency. So this is a bit slower than the 19 and 20 milliseconds they talked about before, but still very, very good and great to see that they're actually testing what it'll be like under heavily loaded conditions. So the idea is when you have congested cells in other areas, when the broader constellation rolls out, they should all be kind of similar to this. They also give a little bit more detail on how they're organizing the customers effectively into the spectrum they have available. So they talk about how previously they organized up to eight user terminals into each frame as it's sent through the RF channel. And that now they've made a modification to the system that will pack up to 20 users into what sounds like the same frame. So it's not absolutely clear on if the frame has remained the same size, but they just were intentionally not packing it as full, or if they're actually increasing the frame size to allow more in. They talk about this increase of 2.5 times in terms of throughput. So it sounds like they're taking the same amount of spectrum in a given frame or probably time slot, and they're now packing more customers into it. So up to 20 instead of eight, so that they can pack more data into the same amount of spectrum space. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I found it a little bit vague, but um, if anybody else has read through it and kind of has a better idea of what SpaceX means, please comment down below. I'd love to have a discussion to kind of dig into a bit more details on what exactly that means. It's also important to note that they specify here that all these latency numbers are from the user terminal to the point of presence on the internet. So it's over the SpaceX segment. It does not include latency from the ground station or the point of presence into the rest of the internet, which makes sense because that part of it is kind of outside of uh, SpaceX control. 
One other little tidbit, they've said of the past 233 satellites deployed, there have been no propulsion failures. So that's a pretty big improvement over the early constellation and typical, I think, of SpaceX where they're continuously improving their designs, that the latest ones are becoming more robust and more reliable. Hey, if you're getting value from these updates, subscribe down below and hit the bell icon so you get notified of all my videos as soon as they come out. It's October now, which means the public beta might be coming very soon. Exciting times. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.